Glad you could join us today on Earth Power. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Cow pea, or black-eyed pea, commonly called beans, is high in protein and several vitamins and minerals. Nigeria is the largest grower and consumer of the crop, but current realities have shown that the country is experiencing demand deficit of over 500,000 tons, while national productivity average has stagnated at 350 kilograms per hectare. Recently, the government released BT cowpea, which is said to be resistant to the pod borer insect. It is a genetically modified seed, and that is where some say the problem is. For the challenge of food security and climate change, what is the place of GMOs in our food chain? That's our focus today on the program. Just stay with us. Suleiman Aliyu is a cow pea farmer in Zaria, a major city in Kaduna State in northern Nigeria. He has been farming for more than 25 years. And for him, the problem has remained the same over the years. Poor yield, drudgery, and low profit. It's about 25 to 26 years since we have been farming. For now, we only make do with the local variety, which isn't giving us the volume of yield we expect. One goes into the beans farming every season, but have very little to show for it at the moment. Kalpi grain is inexpensive and nutritious. It serves as a cheap form of protein for both rural and urban consumers. In Nigeria, cow peas are consumed directly as a nutritious meal at homes and restaurants, often as a porridge or pudding. It can also be combined with cooked rice cereal or prepared as cow pea cake. Cow peas are consumed another way as a fast food called acre, sold along Nigeria's root sides. It's also used as fodder in some parts of the country. The cow pea plant is attacked by pests during every stage of its life cycle. Aphids extract juice from its leaves and stems while the crop is still a seedling and also spread the cow pea mosaic virus. Flower thrips feast on it during flowering. Pod borrowers attack its pods during pod growth, and brochet weasels attack the post harvested seeds. The plants are also attacked by diseases caused by fungi, bacteria, and viruses. Parasitic weeds, stringer, and electra choke the plant's growth at all stages, and nematodes prevent the roots from absorbing nutrients and water from the soil. Most cowpea crops are rain fed, and although it is drought tolerant, cowpea farmers in the dry savannah areas of sub-Saharan Africa obtain low yields estimated at about 350 kilograms per hectare. But Suleiman and scores of farmers like him have been introduced to a new seed variety, a variety just developed by the Institute for Agricultural Research at the Amadubelo University in Zaria. But with the program in place now, we see some improvement because of new variety of seeds we get now. We are hopeful that those with the program will give priority to the new variety of seeds so that we can in turn make huge profits. After going through the relevant trials, the federal government, through the nation's biotechnology regulatory agency, the National Biosafety Management Agency, recently gave it approval for the environmental release of the nation's first genetically modified food crop, which is the pod borer resistant cow pea. This has been genetically modified to resist the insect pest Maruka vitrata. The story behind these beans uh, dates back to around 2001, about 19 years ago. Over the years, there is this particular insect that is so very difficult to control by farmers in the field. It inflicts damages to beans in the field uh, where farmers lose up to 80% of their harvest uh, at full infestation of this insect. Uh, scientists like myself and uh, insect scientists in the cowpea family have tried all things possible to control this insect and all measures have failed except using 
heavy loads of chemical insecticides to control it. And we know that these chemicals are not only harmful to human health, but they are also uh, toxic to our environment. So anything that we can do to avoid the, that very frequent release of this insecticide, our environment, is very good. Besides, also, if we can make it affordable and cheaper for our farmers to grow cowpea. Uh, one of the highest source of cost for growing beans for farmers, farmers will tell you, is the need to keep insecticides. Now, having tried everything and uh, except insecticide, it became very difficult for us as a scientist until recently when we, it was possible for us to develop a new scientific approach using genetic engineering technique where you can, uh, you can transfer heritable characters and improve a crop outside the species. For example, I can use characters from rice to improve uh, guinea corn, for example, if the characters are not found in guinea corn. So unfortunately for us, in the whole of the beans family, there are up to 15,000 different relations of beans, different types. And all of them were evaluated for resistance uh, so that if a single one of them found to be resistant, they can be used to develop new variety that is improved in given high yield and also resistant to this insect, such that farmers will not need to spray as much insecticide on it when they are growing in the field. Unfortunately, none of these 15,000 different strains of beans turn out to be resistant. So the only thing available for us towards developing a new variety of beans that will protect itself against this insect without having to spray insecticide is through the use of the genetic engineering technique, which is called genetic modification. As soon as we got hold of this technique, myself and my colleagues went into work and were able to use this and now have developed a cowpea variety that is resistant to this insect. Even without any, any spray, you can grow these beans and it will protect itself against this insect. However, it is not only one insect that affects beans in the field. There are many others. These other insects contribute up to about 20% of damage they give to beans when they are grown in the field. For this purpose, then there is a need for a supplementary spray, which is decided at a very specific time, identified by our scientific team. So these beans, which is developed using this new technique uh, of genetic engineering, is able to give an opportunity for our farmers to grow beans cheaply, cheaply because they now don't need to spray as frequently as they used to do with com conventional non-resistant uh, cowpeas. This move by the government pitches Nigeria as the first West African country to genetically modify the food crop, which is currently going through the final process for its commercialization. The supporters of this process says the success of commercialization of BT cowpea will make Nigeria the leader in the deployment of the revolutionary technology in addressing the challenge affecting the nation's food chain and will no doubt be used as a model for other West African nations in the deployment of the technology. The result in terms of uh, resistance to uh, food water was excellent and also in terms of uh, yield was also so far because it was about uh, three to four uh, times yield increase over the, 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 the conventional type. Uh, also it has a very good fodder and it's early maturing. So you can think of that uh, a kind of variety that will be a, a modern day variety because it will adapt the current uh, climate change that we are also experiencing. So based on that, we now came up with the material that we say oh, this one they are candidate for what for release. It can be released as a variety for commercial uh, use. Uh, luckily this year, uh, after a series of testing, the National Biosafety Management Agency, who are also the one that are supervising the safety aspect of the, of, of the gene and also the, the whole uh, work that was conducted for the first 10 years, they confirmed to us that uh, 
based on the result that we submitted, and also they also keep on monitoring, they confirm that the gene has no effect on both environment and also food and feed. So it's safe for that. So it can be used for both food, feed, and also uh, environmental release. So they confirm to us that. Then we are now trying to uh, get uh, more dosier to, that will also, uh, as, as a conditions, for us to, uh, to, to get it in order to present it to the variety release committee in the country for release and for the use for the, by the farmers. So that's what we are, uh, the state we are. So this is what we call the nuclear seed. As you are seeing here, is a nuclear seed. After testing and find out that the, the, the resistance is there, now we are multiplying this seed at least to get more. So because based on the seed, it's one of the criteria that also uh, needed to uh, all conditions for us to uh, release. Because we have to get a certain quantity and also present the data to the variety release committee, uh, which is normally uh, a kind of meeting that is held once or twice in a year. Hopefully we are expecting probably by the end of this uh, 2019 call for a meeting. So that's what we are doing here to get the minimum requirement for the seed quantity and also the other dosia is already been generated. We have those uh, kind of uh, data. We keep them here under uh, controlled temperature. Hamza Adamu is the technologist in charge of the insectary at the Institute for Agricultural Research at the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. I'm telling you I'm the one who handled this transgenic right from the beginning of the project. I find it very, very interesting, more especially if I go to the field to, fit, to put this insect on the plant. You put the insect on transgenic and the non-transgenic. If you come to evaluate or assess what has happened to the different lines, you will find out that this insect, you will see them dead on the transgenic cowpea without harming the cow. But in the other lines, which are non-transgenic, non you will see them, they are just feeding the leaves, feeding the flower buds, feeding the flowers, just scattering everything. So I say, ah, that means this technology is working. Because you see this one very good, very clean, this one completely tattered, nothing on it. So I think, it is nice, it is an, a, a nice uh, technology. And if people can accept it, I'm telling you, we will have a cure to our problem of food insufficiency in the country. But there are some that are preaching caution in the adoption of genetic modification in the food chain. Uh, we're not against science. The reality of the life world we live in now is that we need a lot of scientific improvement to be able to grow enough food. For instance, take the fact that we're in the era of changing climate, where rainfall predictions are not regular, where flooding occurs where it's either so was not happening, or where the temperature sometimes, when you expect it uh, to have calmed down, the temperature is still swell. So you need to develop your your seeds, for instance, such that it can resist some of these extreme weather events. You know, so we know that that's, we, you need to um, have seedlings, for instance, that grow better. Uh, even sometimes you can have seedlings that have um, some components of what is deficient in the human system. There are improvements, no doubt. We know about biotechnology. Whether the science is right or not, that this has raised agitations in other parts of the world. That there are court cases in places in Europe, in India, that there are countries that are saying no to this same thing, and there are allegations of its effects, um, even as close as Côte d'Ivoire on their cotton industry. If this exists, then it means that you as a government hold it to Nigerians to allay any fears and to open it for robust discussion. The report of the assessment of the risk of Bt cowpea to non-target organisms based on the history of safe use of Bt proteins as well as the fauna associated with cultivated and wild cowpea in sub-Saharan Africa results indicate negligible effect on non-target organisms.